Assassin's Creed 3, available for pre-order now. Hello and welcome to the 8th episode of the Weapons of Assassin's Creed series, I'm Esco Blades. In this video we're going to be taking a closer look at the Swords of Eden. The Assassin's Creed franchise portrays a set of weapons that were mostly used by the heroes of lore and mythology, as well as great warriors throughout recorded history. The Swords of Eden were pieces of Eden created by the first civilization and many of them have been known by various names during their existence. The Swords of Eden were recognised as weapons of conquest and were created for the purpose of granting the wielder great power and leadership. As such, the ownership of the Swords of Eden often paved the way for a rise of influential leaders and conquerors. One of the first to wield the Sword of Eden was Perseus, a demigod in Greek mythology who used it to slay the Gorgon Medusa. The lightning sword as it came to be known was granted to him by the god Zeus. In Norse mythology, Odin, disguised as a beggar, plunged a sword into a living tree called Banstock, stating that whoever was able to pull it free would receive it as a gift. Only the warrior Sigmund proved able to free the sword and subsequently claimed it as his own. One of the most famous examples is the sword known as Excalibur. Between the late 5th and early 6th century, Arthur Pendragon pulled the sword of Eden out of a stone named Excalibur and used it to become King of England. Excalibur was said to shine with the light of 30 torches and its scabbard protected Arthur from harm in battle. Moving forward in time, a French peasant girl, Joan of Arc, came to discover a sword and took ownership of it during the Hundred Years' War, with which she entered into on the side of the French forces. Becoming a heroine of her people, Joan led the French forces to many victories over the English and their allies. However, she was eventually captured by Burgundian soldiers and handed over to the English. The Templars then burned her at the stake in order to take the sword for themselves. Amazingly, all of the different Swords of Eden that have spanned various myths and periods of history appear to have a common theme. They all bear the characteristics and likeness of a longsword. The longsword is a type of European weapon characterized as having a cruciform hilt with a grip for two-handed use and a straight double-edged blade of around 39 to 48 inches in length. The term longsword is ambiguous and refers to the bastard sword only where the late medieval to renaissance context is implied. Bastard swords were commonly known as hand and a half swords due to the length of the sword grip. The term longsword in other contexts has been used to refer to swords of the Bronze Ages, Migration Period and the Viking Era, as well as the early modern dueling sword. The two most basic forms of longsword blade cross-section are lenticular and diamond. Lenticular blades are shaped like thin, doubly convex lenses, providing adequate thickness for strength in the center while allowing a proper cutting edge. These normally have fullers, which are grooves or channels running down the flats of the blade originating at or slightly below the hilt. The vast majority of Swords of Eden appear to have a lenticular cross-section blade, with the exception of the Sword of Mars belonging to Attila the Hun, which had a diamond cross-section blade. And this concludes our look at the Swords of Eden within Assassin's Creed. As always, a big thank you to Dean Nuke and our Art of Swords blog, as well as Sixteeny, the com dev of the Assassin's Creed wiki, for their help, guidance and collaboration on this project. Additional source material comes from the My Armory website, the Higgins Museum and VikingSword.com. All relevant links are shown on the screen and in the video description. Thank you for watching, take care and bye for now.